How TMI do we want to get on this channel? Because I didn't know if she was going to do like a full cervical exam. Because I guess my worst case fear scenario is that I'm leaking amniotic fluid. If I told you I wasn't nervous right now, I'd be lying. TMI do we want to get on this channel? Honestly, I feel like at this point, there's the limit does not exist. Apologies for the noise. It's very warm today. It's gonna be like 85. And so I have like the AC and the windows open right now, but hopefully you can hear me. Basically, I'm on my way to my OB's office. They want me to come in after I uh, wrote them yesterday. Oh yeah, and they're mowing the lawn. <laughs> So two to three days ago, I want to say, I started noticing that my discharge, because we're just going to use that word over and over again in this vlog, had changed. And it's really difficult because there's just a lot going on down there with my subchorionic hematoma, which I just uploaded that video yesterday. I'm like feeling good in that video, like everything's fine, I'm turning a corner and then you know, but nothing's wrong. I'm manifesting this, lucky girl syndrome. Nothing is wrong, everything's fine. We're just going to check up on it. But basically I noticed that it's just very watery. And it's, that's on top of like the other things I'm experiencing, like the very light brown to yellow type of bleeding that is happening, which is nice. It's actually not like a heavy brown anymore from the subchorionic, so that's really nice. So that seems to be letting up. And because it was letting up, I was like, I'm done with pads. Pads are annoying. When I go to work out, when I go for a walk, they just feel in the way. So I'm like, you know what? Anything that's coming out now from the subchorionic is minimal. I wanna just do my underwear and suck it up. And so when I pulled the pads, <laughs> when I stopped wearing them, is when I noticed that there was that type of discharge, like normal type of stuff, but there was just a lot of water, it seemed like very, very watery, not thick or milky in the slightest. It literally looked like I had peed a little bit <laughs> or a lot of it. It's really hard to tell. Since there's just a lot more going on down there, I of course went to Google, which I'm the worst at taking my own advice, but at the same time, this is my first pregnancy. I have no idea like what's normal and what's not sometimes, you know? I feel like this rant is all over the place, but I'm like trying to like drive and do things at the same time. And Google was less than helpful per usual because I guess my worst case fear scenario is that I'm leaking amniotic fluid. And the worst part is like, I can't tell what's anxiety and like what's something that is in my head that I really should get checked out because I'm thinking it for a reason or it's just a concern that we should definitely rule out, you know? Because it was just a lot of like water and again, that's just seemed like I peed my pants but I'm pretty sure I didn't, so. And it's kind of consistent. It like happens two to three times a day. So I'm like, darn, now I have to go back to pads because that's just uncomfortable just to like feel like you peed a little bit. But I couldn't get the worst case fear scenario situation of amniotic fluid out of my mind. And when I went to Google, they were like, amniotic fluid can be clear or yellowy. And I'm like, cool, I'm literally experiencing some yellow, but I thought it was from the subchorionic hemorrhage because I've literally gone from brown to light brown to yellow. So like it progressed like that. So I assumed that was that, but of course now I'm like mixing it up in my mind because if it's not yellow, it's clear, which the liquid would seems to be clear to me at least and they were like it also doesn't really have an odor and i'm like okay great it doesn't really have an odor so basically i was just very confused and i know especially after reading that stuff i was like mac just write 
your OB. What I like to do if I have a question, and I haven't had a ton, although in my mind it seems like I've had a ton because of the subchorionic hematoma and hemorrhages going on, but I haven't had a ton of like random questions for my OB. So I was like, I don't think this is something I shouldn't ask about, you know, but it is my first pregnancy and I have no idea what I'm doing. But what I like to do is write in with my symptoms in the portal and let them decide if it's normal or if it's not. So I wrote in with all of everything and they called me, got a little more information and they were like, let me check with the doctor and see what they think. And then I got a call back and they were like, yeah, let's just check it out. You know, we don't want you to be leaking amniotic fluid, but if it's something you're experiencing and you weren't experiencing it before, let's just see. And I'm like, you know what? Yes. Let's just see. So if I told you I wasn't nervous right now, I'd be lying. Plus Jack can't be with me because it was like a last minute appointment and he has phone calls on phone calls right now, which I totally understand. So that's why you guys are with me, but I am nervous, but I think it's fine. I'm going in thinking everything is fine. I might just be peeing or it's just normal discharge that comes with pregnancy. And I can deal with that. I can deal with that. I just feel like it's like one thing after another after the subchorionic, but everything with that is totally fine. Every time I think something is wrong or something can't be right, it is. It is. Everything's fine. This baby is resilient. They're healthy. Nothing is wrong. And we're taking that energy in to this appointment right now. I'll see you guys afterwards. It's been a while since I've given an update in this spot. This is fun. Vibes are good. Vibes overall. I'm telling you lucky girl syndrome works. I'm just kidding. I do think it works, but I think everything was fine all along. But first I walked in and I was checking in and she was like, okay, it looks like you need a full bladder for this appointment. And that is the first time that I heard that information. And I had peed before I left this apartment. So I was like, oh, okay. And I tried to act as cool as a cucumber and I was like, do you guys have water <laughs> by chance? And they had a bubbler in their waiting room, but it had like the tiniest cups ever. So I literally was chugging these cups in the waiting room and everyone definitely knew that I forgot to have a whole bladder. I just had to give a urine sample for them to test everything under the sun with that. But then today I saw my doctor's nurse practitioner. I think she has a couple, but she was amazing. I hadn't seen her before. And basically she just told me everything that she was gonna look for. They were gonna do a couple of swabs she was going to take a look to see if my cervix was closed and I was a little worried about that because I didn't know if she was going to do like a full cervical exam which I heard if the doctor or whoever's checking is like checking to see if your cervix is open it can be painful so I was like uh, I don't know about that but hey I want to know if my cervix is closed that's another concern that I have but she was able to look and see that it was very closed so that was great and then the swab was for a pH level Level, she said if there's amniotic fluid and she was like which I do not suspect that there is just based on how everything was looking she said that the pH would be like off the charts and so she did that and then the pH was normal which was great and she was doing it literally like all there she was like we're gonna play a little bit of biology lab here and I was like okay it sounds great and then she ended up taking one of the slides to look under the microscope to look for certain cells which would have to do with either infection and or amniotic fluid and they came back and everything was totally fine. And then she said the other thing that we would normally look for, and she said, again, it's usually later on in pregnancy, but we're glad that we're checking it out now just in case. She said that there would be some pooling within the vaginal canal, and that's just not what she saw at all. So everything looked great. I felt so relieved. Like, there's nothing worse than something happening. You don't know what it is. It's your first pregnancy. You don't want to be dumb and not ask if this is abnormal or not, because what if it is, but you also don't want to be that annoying first pregnancy patient, which is stupid because if we have a concern, you have a concern, right? But it's just this like weird mental game. So that's why I like to just lay it out on the table and ask if they want to see me. And then I make them make the decision because then I'm like, yeah, you guys wanted to see me. I was fine, but like you guys wanted to see me. I clearly was not worried at all, you know? Something that unexpectedly did come out of it though is that I have been getting like a small little what I thought was a small little hive rash type of thing and it started on my belly and then it kind of like was creeping down maybe on my back and then like my leg a little bit. It's not terribly itchy and it's like not disrupting my life at all. And so I literally thought that this is probably just my skin stretching. It's a pregnancy thing. I've never had this before in my life. So clearly it has to do with pregnancy, you know? So before the exam, I told her, I was like, oh, you're gonna see this. I assume it's a pregnancy thing, but like you just let me know. And I showed her and she was like, yeah, no, that is 
not. She's like, I have not seen that. <laughs> so let's just, let's talk about that for a second. So we dove into that and my actual doctor was like roaming the hall. She was like, I think I just saw your doctor actually. Let me just grab her. So it was very chill vibes and I really loved it. And my doctor came in and took a look and she was like, yeah, I'm thinking this. And the nurse practitioner was like, that's what I was thinking too. And they just came up with a plan. We're going to do something topical that's safe for pregnancy. But I literally was just going to mention it during my ultrasound. I think in, uh, I think our 20 week ultrasound, it's not next week, but it's the week after. But since it wasn't bothering me that much and I just assumed that it was pregnancy related, I was just going to mention it, you know, during the next time I was in, but why not now? And then at the end we checked on baby. We didn't do an ultrasound. I wasn't expecting an ultrasound, but she just did the Doppler real quick and she asked if I was feeling movements and I was like, yes. And so she did that real quick and she found baby so fast. It's so interesting because at the very beginning when most people can find baby through a Doppler, I think I was, it was 12 weeks and that's when we got a surprise ultrasound because they couldn't find the heartbeat with a Doppler. And then I went in at 14 weeks and they actually still couldn't find no, what was it? No, it was 14 weeks because two weeks later from the 12 week mark, I had my second bleed. They said I could come in to check the heartbeat if it would make me feel better. And I was like, I will take you up on that. So we did that and she still couldn't find it at 14 weeks with the Doppler. So we did an ultrasound then too. But the first time they found it was at 16 weeks and I fully expected them to have to do another ultrasound. Cause I'm like, this baby just, you can't find the heartbeat. Like this is why we don't have a Doppler in this house. Like I cannot put myself through that. But at 16 weeks, she put that thing on my belly moved it slightly and it was just like so prominent and I just looked at her and she's like yeah it's really easy to find at this point I was like that's crazy so then today it was really easy to find I'm 19 weeks as of yesterday there's such a beautiful sound it ended up being 158 so it is always hovering around that 160 ish mark so I think that's the official over 140 midwives tale maybe a girl situation, but who knows? I had a dream last night, actually. I was watching this video of this other couple doing their like old wives tale tests and I'd never heard of this one, but one of the tales is that if you have had vivid dreams of the sex of your baby, the actual sex in real life will be the opposite. So this couple, for example, she had like four dreams that she's having a boy. So they marked one point for girl as far as their old wives counter and I was like that's so interesting and I tried to think and I could not think of any dreams that I had regarding the sex of the baby it's always been just a general I'm pregnant dream when I was going through IVF I had one of those and then I also had like a birth dream like it was time to give birth dream while we were going through IVF but so far nothing about the baby at all in my dreams but last night after watching that video I fell asleep and I had such a vivid dream that this baby was a boy. And what happened in my dream was that we were at our anatomy scan or some kind of scan and they confirmed that we didn't want to know right then in the room. So like they would tell us to look away if they could, you know, during during the scan when, when we should look away. But in my dream, she didn't tell us to look away at a certain point or baby like quickly flipped over and I saw a male fetus in there. So I woke up and told Jack and I was like, might be a girl. I don't know. I think officially I'm carrying high as well. I know that's a thing. Like if you're carrying low versus high, but I think, I think it's like middle. I don't feel like I'm carrying low anyway. But anyways, my friends, moral of the story, even if you feel in your gut that everything might be fine, but you're questioning it, just write your OB, just write your office, see what they say, see if they wanna see you in or see if it is completely normal because apparently there's just a lot in pregnancy that is so normal. But if you're questioning it and you know that you would feel better just getting checked out, the appointment took very, very little time, just go for it, just go for it because this decrease in stress and wondering is just so worth it. But thanks for coming along with me on an appointment where Jack couldn't come with me. That was very fun. It was very fun and very exciting. I love you all so, so, so much. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. All of my socials, including my Instagram, are linked down below. And I will catch you in the next vlog. I'll see you guys later. Bye!